Get ready for some Disney World drama. So it seems that some of Disney's most popular restaurants are getting skipped by guests. So let's find out which restaurants are stirring the pot in the most magical place on earth and which ones are staying on their best behavior. We'll get to the bottom of this today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. So you know what I really hate hearing about when people get back from their big and expensive Disney World vacations? That they despise the places they wound up eating when there are literally hundreds of options they had to choose from. And here's the real kicker. Usually the reason these people loathe these restaurants isn't because the food is awful, but because those weren't the right restaurants for them and their family in the first place. This is why you're here at DFB Guide. We're going to take you inside every restaurant in Disney World and share the real experience, the good the bad, the controversial, so that you can choose the right restaurants for your group from the very beginning. Congratulations, you are in the right place. So we're going to start with the restaurants that people hated because they were too expensive. There are going to be times when a Disney World restaurant is automatically going to wind up on your bad list because it's just so stinking pricey. I've seen it happen countless times. The higher the price, the higher the expectation. And that's the way it should be, right? Like if you're getting ready to drop 90 plus bucks per person on a meal, then you expect everything to be served to you on a silver platter or maybe even a gold one. However, sometimes our focus on the restaurant price can taint our experience from the get-go because when when you're paying a steep amount of money for food inside a theme park, the overall experience may never meet up with your highest expectations. This is particularly true with restaurants that automatically charge you for a bunch of food thanks to their prefix menus, like what you'll find at Be Our Guest Restaurant in Magic Kingdom, Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom, and California Grill at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Paying for a prefix restaurant is similar to paying for a buffet. No matter what you wind up with on your plate, you're going to be charged the same fixed fee as everybody else. But unlike buffets, when you can just go to town on the buffet line and pile your plate high with the stuff you like, some restaurants with prefix menus and prices will have you choose an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert, regardless of whether you actually want to eat that amount of food or that food specifically. So if you book a meal for maybe be our guest restaurant and your family ends up not finishing all that food and they're eager to wrap things up quickly so they can get back to their park day, the sheer amount of food wasted and the short amount of time you wind up spending at this place does not always justify the price you've paid to be there. If your family loves table service restaurants but also wants the freedom to pay less for the experience, here are some alternative dining experiences you might want to try. Grand Floridian Cafe over the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa has an a la carte menu featuring classic dishes with an upscale twist like that buttermilk fried chicken and waffles, the chilled jumbo shrimp cocktail, and the seasonal soups. By dining here, you can have the experience of eating at the Grand Floridian without shelling out a load of money to do so, like you will over at Narcoosie's or Citrico's or the ever-so-expensive Victoria and Albert's. Not to mention, Grand Floridian Cafe is just a short walk or monorail ride away from Magic Kingdom, making it a great respite during your park day. Oh, you can also take a boat there. And also, the food's really good here. I recommend the chicken and waffles. Now, Chefs de France and Epcot is one of those rare table service restaurants that gives you the choice of whether you want to order your food pre prefix style or a la carte. The prefix menu francais comes with one app, one entree, one dessert, and one glass of either Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Georges de Bouffe, or a non-alcoholic beverage. But if you'd rather not pay around 66 bucks per person for all that food, you can pay for apps, entrees, desserts, and drinks individually. Entrees here typically range around $27 to $44 per plate, but we have found that the prefix meal does get you your money's worth, so that's great. And while, yes, Liberty Tree Tavern in Magic Kingdom still has a prefix price per person, the Thanksgiving-style foods you get here are all served family-style, so you can eat as much as you want for the price that you pay. Never be afraid to ask your server for seconds, thirds, maybe even fourths of that mac and cheese especially to get your money's worth. Now, eating here isn't cheap by any means, but it is one of the more affordable all-you-care-to-enjoy restaurants on property since you're not paying anything extra for the character dining benefit to go along with it. Now, what about the restaurants that are more style than substance? This goes along with what we were just talking about. There are Disney World restaurants that have these wildly popular reputations because of their fun and immersive experiences. But when you strip all that Imagineering away, you're left with a pretty basic meal that leaves something to be desired. Some character meals like Hollywood and Vine at Hollywood Studios and Chef Mickey's at Contemporary Resort can definitely feel this way. While it's awesome to see the Fab Five or some of your kiddos' favorite Disney Junior characters 
wandering about, it also becomes this pay no attention to the man behind the curtain kind of thing. You get so caught up in those character pictures and dance parties and overall interaction that you forgive the mid-tier buffet options you have to choose from. Now, granted, these buffets aren't bad. There's a lot of options to choose from, which is great for families who are trying to cater to a whole lot of different palates. That being said, there seems to be more of a focus on quantity rather than quality, which can easily be masked by the promise of meeting your favorite Disney pals. Over touristy spots like Rainforest Cafe and Disney Springs and Animal Kingdom and T-Rex and Disney Springs have a similar downfall with their a la carte menus. Sure, the animatronic animals and prehistoric creatures are impressive and the menu options will give you a lot to choose from, but the quality of the food you get here is going to be on par with something you'd get from a chain restaurant back home, and it's going to be very, very expensive. So where should you eat if you want the best of both worlds, meaning character entertainment and good food without sacrificing? one or the other. Currently, these are our favorite character-driven restaurants to eat at on property. Garden Grill. I know there are so many unique spots to eat at in Abcot, but you cannot smother my burning love for all things Garden Grill. This family-style meal is a buttery, garlicky cacophony of comfort food that always hits the spot. Not only that, but because this restaurant slowly rotates, that's right, it's a spinning restaurant, you get a constant change of scenery during the course of your meal, which will show you different scenes from the Living with the Land boat ride down below, which is probably the second best ride in Epcot. I'm not taking questions at this time, but let's not forget the biggest reason why I brought up this restaurant right now. You can get lots of fun character interaction here from Farmer Mickey and Pluto and Chip and Dale, all while you eat a bountiful harvest of meats and veggies and mac and cheese with little goldfish crackers on top sometimes. Next up is Artist Point. Now, Artist Point, which is actually called Storybook Dining at Artist Point with Snow White in Disney's World. I think those are all those all those words are in there. I just don't know exactly what order they're in there. Disney likes to name their restaurants with lots of words. Anyway, it's in Disney's Wilderness Lodge, and it needs to be the center of all Disney character dining conversations from here on out. For the price, especially compared to other prefix meals and character meals, Artist Point feels like more of a production, from its theming to its character interactions to its well-thought-out prefix menu featuring themed appetizers, entrees, and desserts that reflect that fairy tale whimsy and high-quality enchantment of the restaurant itself. I love it here. I've been here a few times in the past couple of months and I would go again every night. Now, Tusker House is next on our list here of you get good bang for your buck, both on the theming side and the food side. This is an animal kingdom and it puts other character buffets to shame sometimes. Not only do you get to meet four main Disney characters in their rare safari outfits, but the buffet line is truly unique, featuring a wide variety of classic eats alongside more adventurous African inspired eats. So there's a little bit of everything for everybody. You can always pile high that trusty rich and creamy mac and cheese, or you can branch out and try the curry or North Africa Harira soup. It's totally your call. Now, what if there aren't enough options for everyone? Some of our favorite places to eat in Disney World are going to be the worst options for families. Why? Because their menus only cater to a specific type of audience. We see that happen a lot inside Epcot, especially around the World Showcase, since the different restaurants reflect the different cuisines of that respective country. United Kingdom Table Service, Rose and Crown, is going to serve British feasts. The Morocco Pavilion's Table Service, Spice Road Table, is going to serve Moroccan tapas. The China Pavilion's Table Service, Nine Dragons, is going to serve Chinese specialties. And if you're not a fan of these specific types of cuisine, there's not going to be an alternative menu of chicken tenders and cheese burgers for you to choose from. What you see is what you get because these restaurants are trying to stay as authentic as possible. Now, when you're in Epcot and you're trying to find some place to eat that'll better suit all the different preferences in your party, here are some places that'll hook you up with a wider variety of options. Sunshine Seasons is going to be a really good choice if you want to find enough options to please as many different palates as possible. This is a food court style spot that serves up options for picky eaters like pizza rolls and grilled chicken and adventurous eaters like Asian vegetable noodle salad and Mongolian beef. Now, there are even a few options here for plant-based eaters like vegetable korma and a Mediterranean sandwich. Not to mention, there's also a lot of indoor seating offered here, making it a good choice for very hot or very rainy days. And it's right next to two great rides, Soren and Living with the Land. Now, Connections Cafe and Eatery, this is another solid bet that'll feed the whole family without breaking the bank while simultaneously finding something that everyone can enjoy. Admittedly, this restaurant has some pretty 
mundane choices when compared to the rest of Epcot's dining options, but sometimes that's exactly what you need to feed your family, especially if you've got some picky eaters in your group. This is where I ended up day after day with my kid when he was, you know, eight and all he would eat was chicken tenders. Connections Cafe and Eatery saved my rear end many a time. And of course, the festival booths. Want to try cultural cuisine without marrying yourself to just one option at a single restaurant? You might want to taste your way around the world showcase instead by trying some of Epcot's festival food booths. Epcot hosts four seasonal festivals each year, and each festival comes with dozens of different food booths featuring unique, limited time eats and sweets and drinks. On the first day of the fest, we always enter into the tasting trenches for you and find out which booths are our favorite of the bunch. So make sure to check out our most recent festival videos before making your way out to the park, just so you can get an idea of what to expect before you arrive. So there are Disney World restaurants on property that adults are going to absolutely fawn over because they're fancy and they got high quality food and they're relaxing and they make for the perfect date night. But if you're a kid, these restaurants can be a snore fest. Sure, La Cellier in Epcot has delicious steakhouse cuts, but where's Mickey Mouse? Yeah, City Works Eatery and Poor House in Disney Springs has a wide variety of craft brews, but where's the fun lemonade mocktail with sparkles and Mickey ears? Of course, Hollywood Brown Derby and Hollywood Studios has one of the best Cobb salads and some great other entrees, but why hasn't our server come over to serenade us with song and dance? Now, despite a Disney restaurant being fun for the grown-ups, it may end up being dull for the kids, making them restless and causing the overall experience to be less enjoyable for the whole group, no matter how tasty the food is. Now, for restaurants that are both tasty and entertaining for everyone, consider making reservations here instead. So I will always sing the praises of Sanaa at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge because this is one of the most unique dining experiences that kids of all ages will enjoy. This is honestly one of the only restaurants that made my two-year-old stop just thrashing around nonstop. Now, aside from the top-notch African and Indian-inspired cuisine, the main reason why your whole fam is going to want to visit Sanaa is for those sunset savanna views where you'll get to see real live zebras and giraffes, gazelles, and so many other wildlife creatures right outside your window while you eat. But don't forget, to only book your reservation when it's going to be light outside. Once it gets dark, you can't see those animals anymore. Now, while dinner at Topolino's Terrace at Disney's Riviera Resort still tends to air on the side of fancy boring, anyway, <laughs> for kids, <laughs> breakfast at Topolino's is a whole other character-driven experience. While many places around Disney World tend to serve copy-and-paste type breakfasts, Topolino's breaks the mold with its prefix menu, featuring options like quiche gruyere, sour cream waffles, and wood-fired butcher steak for the adults, as well as create-your-own entree options for the kids. But the best part about this breakfast you get to see the Disney characters in unique and adorable artsy-fartsy outfits. Minnie is in her poet's attire, Mickey's all dressed up as a painter, Donald seems to be working on his sculpting skills, and Daisy's ready to hit the stage in her dancer's fit. And Ohana, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, continues to be one of the most popular hotel restaurants for guests to book. If you visit Ohana in the morning, you're going to get to meet Lilo and Stitch and Mickey and Pluto, all dressed up in their Hawaiian finest for the best friend's breakfast. And if you visit Ohana in the evening, you can indulge in an all-you-can-eat feast of grilled meats, Hawaiian specialty sides, and the signature Ohana bread pudding for dessert. Not to mention, if you time your meal just right, you might be able to catch the Magic Kingdom fireworks from inside Ohana, depending on if you get a window seat or not. So the qualms you have with a Disney World restaurant might be more shallow than you realize. The food might be good and the setting might be decent, but everything about the restaurant feels too familiar. When you book a table service at Disney, you expect something grandiose. You want storytelling and immersive theming and interesting entrees and, you know, something memorable that'll make taking a break away from the parks to experience it actually worth your time and money. Like Teppanetto, for example, over in Epcot. Though this is an exciting teppanyaki style restaurant, where the food is prepared right in front of you, there are plenty of teppanyaki style restaurants located outside the Disney bubble too, with a very, very, very similar setup. Meaning you're going to invest time and money into a park restaurant that's not all that different from someplace that you could go at home. Meanwhile, over at Ale and Compass and Yacht Club Resort, you can dine on New England-inspired comfort food inside a gastro pub setting, but that's pretty much all I can say about it. 
This place feels like a restaurant put into a hotel to provide food for hotel and convention guests. So while Ale Encompass is adequate and not terribly overpriced for Disney standards, it's also nothing remarkable that's worth going out of your way for. And then there are others Disney Springs restaurants that are going to give you a sense of deja vu. The Disney Springs shopping district is full of third-party restaurants that are not directly owned or operated by Disney, and that means the restaurants you find there might also have a carbon copy elsewhere. As much as we love Disney Springs quick service options for being some of the most affordable and still tasty meals inside the Disney bubble, quick services like Earl of Sandwich, Chicken Guy, and Blaze are definitely not Disney-specific restaurants. So if you're looking for unique, these may not scratch that itch for you. So where or where should you go in Disney World if you want to experience a meal that you can only have there and nowhere else? Honestly, a lot of places, but I'll stick with a few highlighted options for now. First, Akershus Royal Banquet Hall. This is in Epcot, and it's what we consider to be the slightly more affordable and easier to book princess character dining experience, as opposed to Cinderella's Royal Table, which is super expensive and hard to book. Though characters can vary, you can typically look forward to meeting princesses like Snow White and Jasmine, Belle, Tiana, Princess Aurora, and Ariel, all in a truly royal castle-like setting. Akershus Royal Banquet Hall features all you care to enjoy family style platters with items like Norwegian meatballs, something that I can't pronounce correctly that is similar to chicken and dumplings, mashed potatoes and gravy, grilled salmon, and macaroni and cheese. Or for an even cheaper option, you can dine here for breakfast for the same character dining experience along with a morning spread of pastries, Norwegian waffles, and breakfast classics like eggs and bacon and sausage. Another place you can go that isn't like anywhere else is Skipper Canteen. Now, I get it. Skipper Canteen at Magic Kingdom is not for everyone, but we love it here at DFB, and if you're looking for different, you're going to get different here. Skipper Canteen pulls you away from run-of-the-mill theme park food and hones in on world-famous jungle cuisine with Asian South American and African influenced dishes. But what makes this place really stand out is its theming, which is all inspired by that classic Adventureland attraction, the Jungle Cruise. Definitely stand up and walk around this restaurant, look at the decor, look at the stuff pasted on the walls. It's going to be very, very fun if you're a huge Jungle Cruise fan. If you're feeling adventurous, but not so adventurous that you're willing to drop a whole lot of money on a full sit down dining experience, then Satuli Canteen in Animal Kingdom is a solid solution. This quick service spot celebrates the culture and art of the Navi of Pandora through its impressive dining room decor and unique menu of options. Satuli serves steamed cheeseburger pods, which is a bao bun twist on a burger that we love, a variety of customizable bowls, and a small selection of colorful drinks and desserts. Now, before we move on to the next gear grinding point, take a minute to scan the QR code you see on the screen if you so desire. This is going to lead you to our free list of DFB's top 10 favorite restaurants in each of the Disney World parks. You can also find this same list over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash top restaurants. Was it hard to narrow down the choices? Yes. Are we glad we did it? Also yes, because this list we're hoping will give you a starting point to work with. This is going to help inspire your Disney dining research and figure out what you want to prioritize for your upcoming visit, which is the whole reason you're here, right? Right. Okay, our next reason that people hate these Disney World restaurants is because reservations book up way too fast. Y'all ever default to hating a restaurant because you feel like Disney's not even giving you a chance to love it? you're not alone. While each Disney restaurant serves hundreds of guests per day, some of the more popular restaurants book up all their reservations way faster than others. These include classic popular options like Cinderella's Royal Table, Ohana, Chef Mickey's, the new popular options like Roundup Rodeo Barbecue and Space 220, and the super new options like we saw when reservations opened on March 5th for the returning 1900 Park Fair at Disney's Grand Floridian. That one will open on April 10th, 2024. So what do you do when the place you wanted to love turns into the place you hate just based on the FOMO alone? Strategy one, set your alarms and skip the heartbreak entirely. Although you can start booking your dining reservations 60 days before your Disney World visit, there's no official word on when exactly those reservations go live. That means even if you mark your calendar for 60 days out, depending on when you hop online to schedule those advanced dining reservations, some restaurants might already be fully booked. Typically, reservations go live on the site around 6 a.m. Eastern, but they've also been known to go live even earlier than that, like 5.30 or 5.45. So if you're really wanting the best chance to get some of those coveted tables, get ready to wake up with or even before your roosters. Now, you can also use your hotel status to your advantage to get even earlier access to some advanced dining reservations. Guests staying at Disney-owned resorts can make reservations for their entire vacation at 60 days out, up to 10 days. So that means you could technically hop on 
online to book your Cinderella's Royal Table meals 70 days before your trip at max. Strategy two, keep checking back. Even though a Disney World restaurant might claim to be booked up, you might actually stumble upon some last minute walk up or wait list availability on the day of your visit. Or you may find some cancellations where people decided that they didn't want to go there. And then you can snag your reservation maybe two weeks, three weeks before you go. There are generally two main ways to check on this. First, some restaurants will have wait lists available through the My Disney Experience app via the dining tip board. But you do typically need to already be within a certain distance from the restaurant to join the list. The other way to check on a restaurant's day of availability status is by visiting the restaurant in person. There have been several times we've seen the waitlist full warning on the My Disney Experience app, but have still been able to join a hidden waitlist just by physically going up to the restaurant's host stand and asking about it. It's always worth asking because the worst a host can tell you is no, but try again later. Also, make sure you're constantly checking for cancellations. It's super easy to do in the My Disney Experience app, and maybe when you're, you know, sitting in the school pickup line or you're waiting for a doctor's appointment or you're just kind of at swimming lessons or whatever, you can just kind of pull up the My Disney Experience app and see if that Ohana reservation opened up or if something for Cinderella's Royal Table is there. And strategy three, have a plan B in your back pocket. I know, it's super disappointing to not get into the restaurant you've been dreaming about trying, but Disney's got hundreds of restaurants to choose from, and believe it or not, a lot of the ones I love the most are not the ones that are booking up the fastest. So if you're on the hunt for a restaurant with easy-to-obtain reservations, try these on for size. Where do you go when everyone in your group wants to sit down for a nice meal on the fly, yet they all have different flavor preferences you want to cater to? One of the table services on property with the widest variety of options that can cater to a lot of palates at once is Yak and Yeti in Animal Kingdom. This features a Pan-Asian menu as well as classic American options for less adventurous eaters. The menu is huge with everything from burgers and fries to more exotic dishes like curries and seared tuna. Now, while I highly recommend getting an ADR for this restaurant, that's an advanced dining reservation, if it's a must do for you, just as a safety net, we typically find last minute availability here relatively often. Now, Beer Garden at Epcot is a Germany buffet filled with laughter and music and the sound of glasses toasting together. This restaurant seats a lot of folks thanks to their family-style seating arrangements, which is great for those traveling with larger groups since Beer Garden can easily accommodate and allow your whole group to sit together instead of having to split everyone up across multiple tables. Also, many of the Disney Springs restaurants are great options. 70 days out might be the maximum number of days you can book an advanced dining reservation for the Disney parks and hotels, but that's not the case with many of the Disney Springs restaurants. Because Disney Springs has so many third-party restaurants available, you'll be able to book reservations for them not just through the Disney World website, but also through opentable.com. Not all of them, but a lot of them. That not only means you'll have a better chance of finding more availability, but you might also be able to book your table out even earlier than the 60 to 70 days mark. Select restaurants might even allow you to book up to a year in advance, though that might be overkill. I don't know, you tell me. Now, how about if it's not the food quality, it's not the theming, it's not even the price point? Some Disney World restaurants are hated simply because they get on your nerves. Restaurants like 50's Primetime Cafe in Hollywood Studios and Whispering Canyon Cafe in Wilderness Lodge have wacky, zany, quirky servers that are there to tease you and joke with you and just add a little extra fun to your meal. The shtick is great for groups who love to play along, but if you've got kids who think they're actually being scolded by the server for not eating all their greens, or you have teens who are mortified by the thought of standing up and singing I'm a little teapot to the whole dining room or in general your family is just kind of tired and hot and not in the mood to be messed with during your meal then the gimmick's going to be lost on your family. Yeah, you can ask to not be messed with during your meal and to simply be an observer of everything going on, but a big part of these restaurants' main appeal is, is that server interaction. So if you don't want that, then booking a table at either location doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let's come up with some much more peaceful alternatives for you. If you're wanting home-cooked foods like 50's Primetime Cafe, you're better off making a reservation maybe for Homecoming in Disney Springs. Not only is the food here better anyways, whoops, did I just say that out loud? Yeah, it's true. But the vibes here are just really down to earth and chill and no one's going to force you to stand in the corner when you accidentally eat with your elbows on the table or throw straws at you when you have the audacity to ask for one and if you're staying at wilderness lodge and you're looking for a nice peaceful serene place to eat literally everywhere else besides whispering canyon cafe is going to have that geyser point bar and grill super chill super yummy roaring fork quick service 
super chill, super yummy. Territory Lounge, super chill, super yummy. Artist Point, chill. And my favorite, for a character dining experience at least. But there's still character interactions here that you may not be too thrilled to take part in if you're just looking for a meal with no extra conversation effort. But honestly, Geyser Point Bar and Grill, Roaring Fork, Territory Lounge, all good places to go in Wilderness Lodge to have a decent meal and just sit and relax with your family. Ooh, now this one might really hit a little too close to home for some of y'all. The reason you might hate a Disney World restaurant is because you've been told to hate it. Mic drop. No, I'm dead serious. So many people out there rely way too heavily on the dining opinions of their friends and family members who've just gone to Disney for the first time. Or they take to heart a super ancient restaurant review that's no longer relevant. Or they get heated up because an online stranger is talking about their personal negative dining experience that's somehow drowning out all the other positive experiences for the exact same place. That's why the DFB team and I work long days every day to make sure we're giving you dining reviews that are both reliable, consistent, relevant. We're taking extra care to weigh the pros and the cons. I mean, that's what we did today, right? Like to ever add La Cellier to a restaurant hate list feels blasphemous to me since I love it there. But I also understand that families with young kids aren't going to have the same love for this place that I do because their kids aren't going to be thrilled to sit in a small, dimly lit wine cellar for an hour, noshing on steakhouse cuts when they could be riding Journey into Imagination with figment for the fourth time that day. And that's also why we have a variety of different reporters and writers to help us out with these reviews too. We've got people on the DFB team who have new babies, who are adults traveling solo, who are retired and doing Disney at a slower, more relaxed pace, and who are just out of college and pinching pennies. And I value the opinions of all of them because I know that together we're all going to be able to create a balanced, honest review from every angle. And that's what we try to do. I mean, just the other day, a handful of us were talking about what I was talking about a few minutes ago, how Rainforest Cafe and T-Rex are just okay food-wise, but not great. But one of our reporters, who has younger kids in her family, piped in and said that anytime she's planning a family day out, Rainforest Cafe is one of her go-tos because it's a restaurant all her kids get excited about over and over and over again. So we're not just going to sit here and tell you to completely exile Rainforest Cafe because it's not going to give you high quality steaks like Le Cellier does. What we're going to do is tell you the truth. This is an experience perfect for some who want an entertaining atmosphere that'll keep your kids engaged, but not for others looking for more of a fine dining meal or a food quality for the buck you're paying. So dining experiences are going to be different for everyone. Before you take something that someone else says about a restaurant as absolute gospel, do the research on your own terms and learn more about each restaurant's dining style and the menu variety and the price ranges and the overall time it's going to take out of your Disney day. To help you get started on all that research, you can definitely check out all of our most recent restaurant ranking videos that we completed for 2024. We've got them for every park. We've got them for the hotels. We've got them for Disney Springs. But also consider grabbing our DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining. That's over on dfbstore.com. It's updated twice a year with the latest reviews and news on every single restaurant in Disney World, and we make sure it's comprehensive and balanced and unbiased so you don't ever feel like you're being led astray by someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. And if you decide to purchase that, make sure to type in code YouTube for a discount. So anyway, the Disney World restaurant you love might be the restaurant someone else hates, and vice versa, and that's okay. The most important thing you need to figure out before your trip is which restaurants are going to be the best for you and your family. I repeat, which restaurants are going to have food your family will love, which ones will have theming your friends will talk about for years, which ones will have the price point that'll give you food that you love and an experience that you love but doesn't overstep your budget boundary, and which ones will be the best fit for your family because the answer to that is going to be different for every single person. But we promise to continue giving you the nitty gritty about each Disney restaurant regardless of its current popularity status so you don't ever have to blindly make a dining reservation and just hope for the best. That's why I started this whole thing in the first place way back in 2009, because I was tired of showing up at restaurants that everybody said were great, and then they weren't great. Now, don't forget, if you want to check out our personal top 10 list of DFB dining favorites for each of the parks, you can pick up our official 2024 rankings over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash top restaurants. Just remember that our preferences may not be the same as yours, but hopefully they'll still give you a nice springboard to work with as you continue studying up on each of these places in your own time. Happy planning. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.